and welcome to Young, Clever and Wealthy, uh, where I interview the movers and sh shakers that decided to live an extraordinary life and how to learn, live on your own, okay, on your own terms. So today's guest is Adam Moody, um, an entrepreneur focused on automation and, and productivity for entrepreneurs. And I'm, I'm very excited for this. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to take a, a lot of value into this. So Adam, welcome and please introduce us. Oh, thank you, Armand. It's good to be here and I appreciate uh, you still doing this like we were just talking about, uh, you know, a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world. So it's, it's uh, one, it's interesting to talk to someone who's in a different part of the world, but also to keep going and keep doing what we're, what we like doing and what we enjoy, which I think we'll probably touch on a little bit here today. Yeah. So, so for other people that, that don't know you, um, what can you, what can you tell them uh, about what you do and how you help people? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I've got my hands in a few different things, uh, but uh, I came to know you actually. I think I'll start there because this is an easier way to tell this. Uh, through Hernan Vasquez, who's a business partner of mine. Uh, we're co-founders along with a couple other guys of a digital marketing training business called Semantic Mastery. Uh, we've been doing that since 2014 uh, and still going strong. And then on, the, on, the, uh, on my own, I do consulting for sales funnels and email marketing. Uh, and then I also founded and run the Productivity Academy. Okay, awesome, awesome. So, um, Adam, uh, what is the role that automation and and productivity productivity really plays in in, in having a seven or eight figure business? How important is it? Uh, yeah, good question. And I think that the the short answer I'll go up front is it's very important, but I'll tell you why. <laughs> uh, you know, as time goes on at all levels, uh, you know, as you kind of move, I'll say move up the food chain, you know, whether you want to get to seven figures, whether you're at seven and you want to go to eight, I can't speak to that. I haven't made it, you know, eight figures, but as at every step I've been to, and I see the people around me, you've got to put systems in place. And sometimes that's automation. Sometimes it's not. Um, but the idea being you need to understand these concepts and put them into place. You know, sometimes it's delegating, so it's maybe not really automating in the sense we think about it. Um, but it's crucial because you've got to free yourself up to be doing the more critical thinking. Um, you know, at the very bottom, when you're just getting started, maybe it's just carving out like 30 minutes to do some literally thinking, like just saying, hey, what's going on with my business? How can mm -hmm. I move up? How can I do this or that? And I think that... Uh, one quote really puts it in place because I know sometimes I get pushback on this and people are like, you know, you can't automate everything and you should do automate everything or automation's bad or automation's the best. And it's not that you should automate everything. Um, there's certain things that you can't, but you want to get the lower value or repetitive tasks, automate those, delegate the things that you've mastered or you have a process for. And I was, I was interviewing someone, uh, Matt Barnett, uh, the founder of Bonjoro, which is a really cool app. Um, you, everyone should go check it out for their business. Uh, but he said, you know, automate processes, not relationships. And I think that that's a good thing to remember. It's like, you know, there's certain things you can't or don't want to automate. And in the end, it's up to you what you want to do. And a lot of times it's getting that stuff off your plate. Um, there's not always a hard rule about what you should be automating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's good. Relationships, no, no relationships. But yes, something the low value things, and I love that that the, the thing of critical thinking. That's I think Rockefeller, Rockefeller had, a, had a quote saying, "A man that is working all day doesn't have time to make a lot of money." Don't quote me on that, but it's like that goes along those lines. And uh, that's that's a that's a great point. So yeah, that really just real quick ahead. that it's home with me because you know over the last few weeks with the issues. Uh, for people watching in the, you know, months or years down the road, this may not, I'll have to explain why, but because of the coronavirus issue going on right now, um, whether, you know, we allow it to affect ourselves or not, it's certainly affecting everyone's lives. And I've had to think about it. I'm talking with family. I'm talking with friends. You got this and that. And just over the last two weeks, I've noticed, wow, I have a lot, or I feel like I have a lot less time. And, and it's been something where I've had to sit down and think about this and say, hey, this is going to be the new normal for a little bit. How do I deal with this? Because I still need that time to just think things through. And that's partially just the way I operate. But like you were saying, you know, people, if you want to be successful, you've got to have that time to do some critical thinking. Uh, and now more than ever, I think that that's really important. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what mistakes uh, do you see entrepreneurs do like in terms of time management? Like you, you always see this and then like, you're like, 
well, like this is totally wrong and she, he, he or she should do it this way. What, what do you see? Yeah, I'm, you know, I apologize. I'm not going to be like the super memorable person because I believe that there's so much gray area. Uh, but I will say that, you know, my thing is it's whatever works for you. And I'm not, um, I'm, I'm generally against the hustle idea with a caveat. Like there is a time you have got to hustle. If you want to get shit done, you've got to, you've got to bust your ass. But you can't maintain that. Nobody can uh, forever. And so that's one where I see, you know, did you, the people who say, you know, hustle 24 seven, work on the weekends, blah, blah, blah. It's like, if that's what makes you happy and you've really sat down and thought about it and like, that's all you want out of life, then good for you. I'm willing to bet that for most people, you know, if they really stopped and thought about it, they would want, you know, better relationships with their friends and their family. Um, they would want time to pursue some activities outside of work because those things just enrich and help magnify the results you get. Mm -hmm. forming connections, things like that. Um, so I, yeah, I guess I would say for me, it's not, um, it's hustling a little too hard and staying focused. Sometimes letting your brain kind of go out and do these other things, uh, can, can really magnify your results. Mm -hmm. Can can you, uh, and, and I know I'm not, but like, I want like someone to get like specifics maybe into this. So, so let's say I'm working, I don't know, 60 hour a week, stuff like that. Uh, what is something I can do that that would that that would like help help facilitate that 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 process? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of ways to do this. I think we'll get into it a little bit more in depth, but I think I'll start at the very high level and say if you don't know what you want out of life, like this is some pretty high level stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, it's ongoing. There's not one answer, um, but starting to do some of these exercises where you really ask yourself, hey, and what am I if is what I'm doing on a daily basis, weekly basis, is this driving me towards where I want to go? And, you know, we all do things that maybe we don't want to do, whether it's paperwork or we don't like our job or, or, you know, things change. But just in general, do you like what you're doing and do you think it's driving you forward? And so you could do that literally um, uh, doing kind of a monthly review, quarterly review, weekly, however you want to do it. Another thing I've done personally is to do uh, a book called Unique Ability. I think it was Dan Sullivan. And mm -hmm. to take this, and it took me a couple months to really go through this, although you could certainly do it in like a week if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, but to go through this, and it's, you know, kind of along the lines of some of those strength finders and understanding yourself. And it also helps you with, hey, what are the tasks that I should be doing? Uh, because the big thing about this is it, it asks you questions that you have to answer honestly about yourself, about, you know, your life, what you want to be doing. And then it ultimately ends up with a statement about yourself saying, this is my unique ability. This is the thing I kick the most ass at. This is what I am here to do. And I should be trying to get rid of everything else. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. So, so, so this, this, like, this perfectly goes into my next question. It is very related, which is, okay, I'm an entrepreneur. And what is the process would you, that you would take me to? And maybe we have to go to the three questions, right? But yeah. What is the process like, okay, listen, Adam, I have a problem. I, 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 I know I, I can be more productive. I know I can get more hours. Yeah. What should I do first? Do that whole top level thinking of, hey, what, what do I want to do, right? Next, what's next? What's next? I would say, hey, uh, take a piece of paper and uh, draw you know, a bunch of lines across it, have maybe uh, two columns. And just every 30 minutes from when you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night. So rough, just ballpark it. Let's say you get up at uh, 6 a.m. and you go mm -hmm. to bed at 10 p.m. And mm -hmm. so every 30 minutes. And for as long as you can, up to a week, write down every 30 minutes what you're actually doing. Um, you know, don't take more than 10 seconds to write it down. Uh, but this is just so that you can start to get a handle on what's actually going on in your life. You can use a spreadsheet, whatever, but literally I've done this with an old piece of paper that was laying on my desk. And every once in a while, I still do this because it's shocking how much time we spend doing what we don't think we're doing, whether it's Facebook, uh, looking at email, you know, and, and the important part with these is that we're honest with ourselves too. Like nobody else has to see this. You don't have to tell people you spend four hours a day on Instagram, but it's important that you understand where your time's going because you can't change it until you understand it and measure it. Mm -hmm. and, and how often do you check up, uh, check up on yourself on that same thing 
every three months. Uh, uh, it's a, I think quarterly is a good one, but for me, it's just more of, I know that feeling inside me when I'm like, man, oh. I just don't feel like I'm in control of things or not out of control, but just like, yeah, I feel like, you know, things are getting a little loose or, you know, just that internal feeling. And so I think that's a good one for people because if, you know, you're just killing it and your, you know, your routine's working, you know, hey, good for you. Keep going, you know. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's, that's great. That's, um, do you think there are, there are times that we, we quote unquote, like, like when we're doing really well, we kind of self-sabotage ourselves thinking that we're doing well and we don't worry about productivity as much? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, to be honest, I would say I don't know. Uh, so I'll have to look into that. I think that that's probably something that could happen. Uh, but the, the two things I recommend putting into place kind of solve that. So I don't really, I, that may be why I don't know, um, is doing a daily review. So every day, um, you know, I sit down and gather all my information together, kind of a David Allen getting things done type of idea. Like I look in my notebook, I look in Evernote, um, although I've switched to Notion recently. Anyways, just okay. all these things, look at my calendar, get all this stuff in and then say, okay, what's actually important, you know, and then what can I delegate? What can I just say isn't important anymore? And then what are my action items for the day? That's the very simple version. Uh, but doing that on a daily and then once a week, uh, you know, I sit down and, and do more of a critical uh, thinking where I ask myself three questions. And uh, I don't know if you want to talk about that now or if we should get to that later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's get, let's get through them. Um, yeah. Tell people. So before that, David Allen, you said, um, can you, uh, for other people, for example, I don't, I don't know anything about him. Can you tell a bit more of, of like how, how is that morning routine um, working? And then we can switch on that. Definitely. So like um, for myself, uh, you know, I still, I have it written down. Actually, this is funny. I didn't pull it up. Um, I'll do that in the background while we're talking. But I have the process written out just because if I don't do that, I know that I will skip steps, right? Whether oh, I'm being lazy. Yeah, whether I'm just in a hurry or, you know, I'm, I'm normal. I forget things every once in a while. Um, so yeah, I just, that, just like a pilot has a checklist or stuff that like before launching. Yeah, that's that's, I mean, that's actually very clever. I should do that on a lot of my. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, and I set up reminders, right? And uh, now it's pretty much ingrained. I've been doing this for years, but for a long time I had uh, a reminder on uh, to do list I was using. I would have set an alarm on my phone or my calendar, um, you know, just whatever it took to get this done. And then that had a link over to it. Um, so what I'll basically do is uh, go through and I have a couple questions I answer for myself and these are just personal um, mm -hmm. and anyone you could use these or someone else could alter them. It's just kind of, you know, like, Hey, physically, how am I feeling today on a scale of one to 10? Uh, mentally one to 10, how am I feeling? A couple other questions like that. Uh, if I hit the gym, I have a workout tracker just so I can keep track real quick of, of where I'm at as well as that'll, you know, jog my brain and be like, Oh, I didn't go to the gym. I need to get in the gym. Soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I use, uh, the best self journal. Have you heard of this one? Uh, this thing. Mm, so yes, but not really. So if you can yeah. tell me, that'd be great. It's just a, they do a daily, uh, rundown and then they've got weekly habits and you can go monthly as well. Um, it's not so much that I say you have to use that, or, you know, for yourself or listeners, it's that you have something that you use that's like that. Um, there's lots of great planners out there. Um, and it basically just helps you organize it. If you don't, if you don't want to do something physical, that's fine. I just recommend having something where you're actually setting your day out and using a calendar because if it doesn't get planned for, it's probably uh, not going to get done. So anyways, that's part of mine is on a daily, uh, uh, part of the daily review. I just go yeah. through and write down, okay, here's my major things. Here's what I'm doing. And I follow that. It, again, it has some sub points, like what are my most important tasks, you know, things like that. But, uh, in this case, for someone just getting started, I don't think the details are as important as just write down what it is you're going to do. So um, next for me, uh, again, this is a little personal, but like I go through and I review uh, my um, sales funnel in, t in terms of prospects uh, mm -hmm. do, for my consulting. Do I have anyone I need to contact? Where's everyone at? I just keep myself up on that. Uh, and then I go through and review my calendar and make sure that, you know, there's no surprises. Um, I find that this one's a really important one. Uh, I think everyone's been guilty of it. 
you miss a meeting or you know yeah. you didn't look at your calendar in the morning and you just start yeah. working and then you get a message and it's like oh crap i forgot about that meeting right yeah exactly yeah yeah so that's a big one for me and that only takes a few you know a minute maybe so but i just make sure that i look and that way i'm aware of what's going on uh next up would be reviewing uh all projects i have open uh, and this is just up to you how you want to individually organize these, but I, any important projects, I just make sure that I have eyes on them. Um, you know, if there's any to do's or information needed, I just make sure I'm aware on a daily basis of what's going, uh, same thing with clients. Uh, and then I go through and actually schedule out my day because now I've looked at my calendar. Uh, I've looked at any loose notes and I've looked at my big projects as well as clients. And I can go through and say, okay, now I know truly what the most important things are. Instead of saying, oh, I just opened up my email and started responding and working on what I Exactly. Said. Wow, that's so powerful. Yeah. yeah. You get into a bad mood if you get a bad email or whatever and your day is ruined. Wow, yeah. So yeah, I'll say something else about this too. Like, I'm normal. I am not a robot. Like, I, you know, as much as I try, sometimes I end up on my email, you know, in the morning yeah. or I'm having some coffee. But the reason I have all this stuff written down is because of that. Because I'm normal, I slip up, but I, I have that reminder, go do this, Here's it. here it is. So I don't have to remember it. I get reminders and then it helps me get back on track. Mm -hmm. So so that's, almost, that's, that's basically the daily stuff. And what about, like, let's go on the, on the weekly questions. Sure. Uh, if you want, uh, you, can, you can explain that the, the weekly assessment for yourself. I can go on the stuff that I, we basically guys, uh, what happened was a week or two ago, Adam sent me the questions I answered and I reacted. So, so that's going to be funny to see what's happening. Yeah, this is good. So I think, yeah, if you're up for this, what I'll do is go through and explain why, uh, what it is. And then I'm curious to hear, hear how it went for you. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So yeah, once a week <laughs> and I, I do owe this to somebody and I, I can't for like, I forgot to look it up before we talked, but I got, the outline of this idea for someone else and then I, I kind of tweaked it and came up with my own questions but I like the idea once you've got the daily review down I consider that truly to be the most important thing because if you don't have a good control on your day um, then it's tough to do you know higher level stuff so get that under control once you've got a daily review once a week schedule 30 minutes uh, and you know do your homework find a time that works for you that you know you're gonna do it um, you know, if you don't work on the weekends, don't put it on Saturday or Sunday. It's got to be a time where you're going to do this. And uh, I like to do it somewhere else. And so just to explain, I get out on Tuesday afternoons. I have a company meeting and then I hop on my bike and well, not right now, but on normal weeks, I would go down to a cafe and I bring my laptop and I just sit down and answer these three questions. Uh, and the reason I get out is just to get my head, like I'm not in front of my computer, I'm not in my normal work mode, it's just getting yourself out there, right, kind of switching the environment so that you're mm -hmm. more likely to focus. Mm -hmm. and the three questions are these. So what has gotten me the best results in the past week and how can I get more results like that? Second question is, what is the one thing that I can delegate, uh, delete, or automate? And then the third question is, what is not working well and how can I do it in half the time or get rid of it? And I realize that third one sounds a little bit uh, similar, but there's some, I keep it there because sometimes there's things that uh, we need to do and it can't, and it has to be us. We can't delegate it. So I just look at that as, you know, can I get it done quicker or can I maybe truly get rid of it? Um, something I will say about these is it's important. Again, I've mentioned this earlier, but just be honest with yourself if you do this stuff. Um, sure. The more honest sure. you are, yeah, it's a good habit to get into because, you know, if you're fooling yourself, you're only hurting yourself. And nobody ever has to see this stuff. Uh, and then the second note on this is I highly suggest writing it down. Um, I, can, I do mine on a laptop if you want to write it, but it's better than just kind of trying to think it over. Uh, it's surprising what you'll come up with when you actually write it down and you see it. Uh, and then coming up with things you can fix based on these. Uh, it, it's truly powerful. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, like I'm, uh, I'm guilty of not doing it outside. Like just even going for a walk, and just sitting in a bench somewhere and doing this, it, I, I'm guessing it has to be so much more revealing than just in your normal work environment. So, so I just wanted to showcase that, um, and then writing on on, on 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 a piece of paper or whatever, a notebook. Yeah. So for me, uh, what has gotten the best results in the past week? How can I get more results like that? 
for me, it was get get into more uh, organic Quora uh, strategy. So for me, it, I, I got it's funny. I got a lot of um, a lot of views or and organic traffic to website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Through Quora, I, I, this is not about me, but just this is the answer. And what I've been doing is just more articles, more articles, more articles, and it's, it's I mean it's 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 just it's crazy. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go way way up with, with, awesome. with business the new stuff. So I, that was a, a very good question. Like, hey, what's working this week? This past week is not what worked two months ago. It's not what you think is gonna work. Hey, what worked? Uh, so yep. that was powerful. Uh, one thing you can delegate, delegate or automate. I can automate my learning time by making it the same time every day. That's because I, that's, that's what something that happens and uh, I, I, like, there is usually times. So now it's every, every, every time I wake up, I just started reading the 10 pages I got to do every day. Re like really, I, th that's, that's helped me because I haven't, I haven't skipped any day. Nice. That's by doing powerful. that. And then, and then, uh, what is the, uh, what's not working well and how can I do it in half time and get rid of it? So <laughs> yeah. what's not working well is my body. <laughs> That's why oh, I was working because... Uh, don't get rid of it. So. <laughs> yeah, I cannot get rid of it. So how can I do it in half? Of, so, so how can I do it in half? Like exercising. That's what I was referring to. Like okay. what is not working? Exercise not working. You're not working. So... The, 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 the answer was just exercise for at least 10 minutes, 20 minutes. I get that you cannot do maybe 15 minutes every day, but just do 20, 20. Yeah. That, that was, that, that was one. And, and, and either walking, some days I just go for a walk. Some days today I train, um, shoulders and, and yeah, so, so, so it's getting that. So that really helpful, really helpful guys. What do you think? Uh, one, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that you already had some good results uh, with this. The second thing that comes to mind, how you uh, just free advice that you didn't ask for, is okay. maybe combine those two where you're doing your learning in the morning, combine that with the exercise, um, you know, for myself and I know with others, generally, if you put the more important things up front, they get done. So maybe your routine could be go for uh, however you want to do this, maybe go mm -hmm. for exercise for 20 minutes and then sit down and do your reading or do your reading and then um, go exercise. But yeah, I find most people have to do the exercising the very first thing. Um, Interesting. And, yeah. And for yourself or if anyone else is really interested in this, a friend of mine wrote a really good, easy read book. It's we'll put it on show notes, whatever you. Yeah. Whatever you automate your routines, guarantee your results. Uh, Catherine Jones. Um, okay. And she wrote this and she goes into detail about this and some of this on the surface you you might see this and think it's so simple But they're so helpful these routines you can set up for yourself like uh, for exercise if you want to exercise first thing in the morning uh, You know, maybe at night you start putting your shoes and a pair of shorts and a t-shirt wow. So that like yeah. there is no excuse and you have to walk wow. by that, you know And like it's a reminder if nothing else it's gonna shame you into it, but hopefully it just triggers <laughs> yeah. like yeah, let's go do this. Um, so yeah, little things like that make a big difference. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where, where I read it from, where just putting the dumbbells in front of you or something like that, where it, 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 it's annoying you, but you got to go through the dumbbells to yeah. that reminds you. So yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Um, Adam, like how does your um, circadian, so, cir circadian cycle where you're a more of a night owl morning person. How's that affect your productivity? That's a good question. So I'm definitely a morning person. Um, so I enjoy getting up early uh, and getting to it. And, and so for me, I just, I've learned over the years, like my most productive times uh, are in the morning. So generally from around the time I wake up uh, until probably early afternoon, you know, I can just kick ass. And after that, it, it sharply declines. And I could probably do it again in the evening if I need to, um, but I just generally don't do that in my life. What I want to do is I want to focus on things I enjoy doing, uh, get them done, and then enjoy the rest of the time of my day, whether that's, you know, going out on a trail runner, um, you know, going out and doing that, going for a hike, cooking, walking, you know, hanging out with friends, whatever it is. So, but yeah. I know that other, other yeah. people, you know, are evening, you know, they like being night owls, they like doing their thing. And so I'll kind of circle back here where we were talking about doing your time tracking. And that's why I think it's important you time track your whole day 
and start to realize you might find some interesting patterns like, oh, I thought I was a morning person, but it's, I'm actually doing the more important things in the evening, you know. Um, I, I would be surprised if someone truly found that out, but you can see, you know, little things where, oh, maybe I should adjust my schedule or, you know, if I'm a morning person, why am I taking calls at 10 a.m.? when like that's my most important time and my most productive time. Like I should move that stuff uh, away into the afternoon when I can still handle it, but I'm not going to be focused on a project. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, do, have you like, how, how, how do you have find out, found out about your, um, your rhythm? It's just by experience or I'm guessing, I'm guessing, and maybe I'm answering myself, but the 30 minute thing could should probably answer answer it for you. What do you? Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's both. I think obviously, you know, everyone understands themselves more or less, uh, you know, based upon their own experience. You know, you've lived your own life the longest, so uh, you know yourself. But then, yeah, starting to write this stuff down, starting to to realize it, and something I'll touch on real quick was what we've talked about with the daily review and then this weekly review. Like this stuff is kind of fractal in the sense that it hmm. applies at all levels. So you can do it on the one day level. And then you can have a weekly review and then you could start taking those weekly reviews into a monthly review and you could have a, a quarterly review. And so like I've started doing it now where I even have a yearly review and every quarter I just put some of this stuff into a yearly tracker so that when I get to the year, you know, there's no way I can remember everything over the past year, but I yeah, have these sure. same questions like what's worked really well for me over a year. And then it's kind of done for me because I've done it every quarter. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind there that this stuff can apply at, at, at all levels and really help you out. And, but like I said, I, I, uh, I think people should start with the day and the week, see how it works for you. Exactly. Um, you Don't know. get overwhelmed. We're going to yeah. talk about a lot of good stuff. Just take it as for, for a little steps and it's, it's just a lot of goal. So just steps, 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 steps. Yeah, and something else I want to say too, I want to wrap this back around because I know a lot of people are, you know, thinking, well, what about uh, my business? You know, what about, you know, growing a team? And yeah. a lot of this stuff applies. Uh, you know, this is the okay. same stuff. What's gotten you the best results personally, but what's gotten your business the best results? You know, what's going on? Um, you know, what is one thing that you can uh, delegate, delete, or automate? Maybe you have a project manager. Maybe you could train them to do this and ask themselves that once a week. Um, you know, this, and I speak from experience, this is all stuff I've done where I have a project manager and I said, Hey, you've got to start getting some of this stuff off your plate. You know, we'll hire you a, a low cost VA at first to get some of this done. You know, I'm paying you good money. I don't need you, um, you know, doing repetitive tasks. So start doing this every week, send it to me what you've, what you want. And if you need anything, let me know. Uh, you know, and that's been, been really helpful. So mm -hmm. even if it's not for yourself, start sharing the stuff with your team. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. That I I love that you Adam. I love that you bring the business focus. So mm -hmm. so if moving forward you see that something else also applies, please please also 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 keep on doing that. And how do you how do you handle those unproductive days that all of us have once in a while? It's a great question. I love this. Uh, something that I think that that productivity does that having these systems these processes in our lives does is it, it um, you know, you, let's say our life is kind of, I'm trying to look at myself on the screen while I do this. You know, we have ups and downs, right? Everybody does. But what this stuff does, instead of letting you drop way down, to me, it kind of stops you from going so low. So maybe mm -hmm. you have a bad day where you're just like, and we, we all have it, you know, screw it. I just am not motivated. I don't feel like doing this. But I guarantee you, when you see that daily review, you'll be like, fine, I can just get through that. And then once you get through that, even if you're having a bad day, maybe you just focus on the one important thing and it just keeps you from totally falling off the tracks and just having like a terrible day and basically losing all of that time. So that's the way I kind of look at this is like, it just helps keep you on, on track and then stops you from falling so low so that, you know, on average, you're just getting better and better results. Mm -hmm. So, so what, uh, yeah, I agree. So, so basically, <clears throat> Once you have all those systems, just just do do one thing. Just try to do the other little thing and just keep going. I think I think that's that's a great answer too. Um, to not get overwhelmed because uh, a lot of times we wake up all the emails and everything. So yeah, great. Yeah, and I think it's a good important one now. And I I mean I mean it. I really do. Like I got to remind myself of this stuff. And this is 
part of why I do it. Like we're in a situation now in the world where it's like, yeah, this can be overwhelming. And like waking up in the morning and just being like, Hey, you know what, God, what's going to happen today? You know, sure. are there going to be soldiers on the street? Am I going to be able to get groceries, you know, or right. is it just going to be fine? And that level of uncertainty, um, you know, I've been talking to people about this a lot over the last week or two. Uh, and you know, it's something I, I'm glad I have these systems for to help keep me moving. So even though, you know, my anxiety is higher than usual, I may feel a little bit more stressed, things continue more or less to move along. Hey, thank, thank you for sharing that. Uh, thank you for being uh, honest with us and show that, hey, I mean, everyone is figuring out each, each everyone has its own things. Uh, let's move to a business, um, more of a business question, uh, which I, I think I like this question a lot. Um, what have been some of the automations that you have set up for yourself or your business um, that have saved you huge, huge amounts of time or and or money? Gotcha. Um, this one, okay, two. Let me write this down so I get back to this. So email and notes. Okay, the first one uh, is really simple. So I use uh, Zapier uh, as an automation system. It can be used fairly simply. And I just have it connected. I use Todoist as well to track my to-dos. So mm -hmm. I connect that with my email. So when I go into my email, um, I generally do try to keep inbox zero, which I'm trying for like the first time as of like the first of the year. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give this a shot. <laughs> but sometimes uh, I can't deal with things right away. And I don't want to like boomerang back into my inbox. So what I do is if I star an email in Gmail, it goes into Todoist. And then I oh. can archive it and get rid of it. And in the sense that I know it's something that needs to be acted on later, but maybe it's going to take more than a minute. So I just do it that way. That has saved me so much time and it keeps me out of my inbox because then I can go through, delete, archive, do quick replies, and I star anything that I need to do later. And then I close the inbox. Uh, and so that one has been, has been really big and it's pretty simple to set up. Mm -hmm. What uh, about the, the other thing? Yeah, the second one is uh, a little bit more complex, but this has been better for my business, uh, especially somatic mastery. Uh, so mm -hmm. when I'm working with partners, uh, something that we need to have is, is good meetings, right? You know, yes. the communication, the relationships. Um, but if you don't have a schedule, it turns into one of those things, you know, a lot of reasons people hate meetings is because they're unproductive. Sure. Um, you know, it could have been handled in an email, but if you have an agenda and you're able to stick to it, uh, you know, that's a really powerful tool. And so what I've done is come up with a template for my meetings. And I have a zap that's a little bit more complicated, but it basically takes the template, makes a copy of it, updates the dates in it, and then um, sends out a notification into our Slack uh, channel and says, you know, hey, this week's uh, notes are here. If you guys, and there's even a section for it. If you have any uh, mm -hmm. agenda items or anything we want to talk about, put it here. Yeah. Yeah. And so just that copying part and, you know, editing and all of that, that saves me probably five minutes a week, which sounds small. But I did the numbers on this. And let's say you were able to do that for one task every week, right? Okay. You, just, you automated one task and all it did was save you five minutes, but it happens over and over again. If you did that over the course of a year, you'd invest, you know, a significant amount of time. Let's say you spent 30 minutes a week. So, okay, you're spending that time, but these tasks go away and they keep happening in the background. You would save yourself the equivalent of five days worth of work. Wow. It's crazy, right? And it's not even five eight-hour days. I mean like five 24-hour days. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So anyways, the power behind that stuff. So when people hear this, I know a lot of times, you know, we think like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't mind copying something and pasting it into Slack. Yeah, but now you're taking up that time when you could be moving on to the next thing, doing some higher level stuff. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a powerful one. I really like it, and it helps keep our meetings on point and, and, and on important topics, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so uh, two questions. Um, <clears throat> uh, some fun questions. I'll, tell, I'll, I'll go with the fun questions later, uh, yeah. but... Um, Everyone has this where we see back on our lives and see, hey, I should have done this better. I should have done this other thing better. In terms of productivity, like, what are some mistakes that you've done in the past that that you 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 you've learned from that have helped you moving along? Definitely, um, something that I wish I would have done a long time ago um, was to start using a calendar as my basis for for planning my day, my week, whatever it is. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so this is done a little bit in the best self journal. Uh, I plan out my day, uh, but for a long time, I, I can't think off the top of my head when I kind of switched over, but you know, I would use a task list, which is certainly better than nothing. Um, yeah. but the problem with the task list is it's just this endless list of things to get done. And the reality is we don't have endless time. Yeah. And if you don't prioritize very well, then that turns into a problem because there's always more to get done. Um, so using something like Google calendar, um, there's a product out there called focuser. Um, I did an interview with the founder of that. It's really cool. It's a two way sync between basically a to-do list and your calendar. So like you can schedule something in and say, this is going to take 30 minutes and it goes into your calendar and finds the next 30 minute spot and pops it. Yeah. Super cool. But you can do this on paper too. So, you know, for people who are, are just getting used to it, the important part is that you just realize that you only have a certain amount of time and mm-hmm. you know, finding out yeah. that, Oh yeah, I can't do 15 things today just cause it's on your task list. Doesn't mean it's going to get done. Yeah. Mm. True. So, so basically what you're saying is, Hey, put a time limit into this or put, put it somewhere where it's not 15 stuff, 15 tasks, 20 tasks. And everyone of course is going to get eventually discouraged on that. Yeah. And so, it starts to give you feedback too, because if you say, um, okay, today I need to write an email. I need to, um, have a meeting with the client and I need to, um, you know, I don't know, whatever, clean the house. Why not? Uh, and you say, okay, well, writing that email is only going to take five minutes and meeting with the client is scheduled for 30 minutes. Cleaning the house is going to take an hour. You're going to find out that maybe the writing the email actually takes you half an hour because you forgot that you've got to load it into active campaign. Uh, and you've got to deal with the fonts and you copied and pasted it and the formatting's all screwed up. Uh, and then the client call, they're late and then it goes over and that turned into an hour and then you were tired. So you didn't clean the house. So you start, you know, and it's not always a bad thing, but you know, getting this internal feedback and realizing, ah, okay, this is the real time and mental cost for this stuff. Mm. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, tons of valuable uh, tips here. So uh, going back to, so going back to, to how, how you, we know each other, semantic mastery, mm-hmm. um, how, is it, how is it like working with five people in a partnership and do you recommend partnerships? Uh, yeah, it's really interesting. So this was the first partnership that I got into. Uh, like I said, this was in 2014. Uh, and so we came out of a, a mastermind and started meeting on our own and then eventually turned into the business. And I would tell people not, I would never go looking uh, for a large partnership, um, but that's just the way it happened. Uh, and a little backstory for me, this is, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I used to be an engineer. Uh, so I, uh, my background's in uh, physics and, and optical mm-hmm. physics, and I worked as an engineer doing uh, some laser mm-hmm. design and thin film coding. And I remember driving to work one day and I only had like a 15 minute drive, wasn't in bad traffic. And I am just like white knuckling on my forerunner steering wheel, just like, and I got to a red light and just that internal like stress of like my day hadn't even started. I wasn't even at work yet. And I just like started like hitting my head at the stoplight on the steering wheel. Yeah. And for me, that was a big turning point. And the reason behind this was like, one, um, clearly I didn't like the job, but two, I didn't like who I worked with. Uh, and I ended up leaving the company because I felt they were doing some unethical stuff and they chose uh, not to change that. And I wrote them a letter and said, if we can't change this, I need to leave. So Adam left. Uh, yeah. And so then I left forming, the chat. <laughs> yeah. So forming uh, the partnership with my partners, the good part was these are people I highly respect. Uh, you know, and these are people I enjoy learning from. These are people I enjoy uh, being associated with. And so that's been really important to me. And on top of that, I get to make money with them, which is uh, very nice as well too. Uh, so, but for people out there who are looking uh, to do this, you know, a partnership can be a wonderful thing. It's like anything in life though, it's two way street. You know, you, you've got to uh, bring something to the table, uh, but you know, there's nothing wrong with having a partner who's got the strengths, you know, that are complementary. And I think that that can be a really great thing. Like with Hernan, uh, that guy is an action powerhouse. Uh, you know, I've learned from him that I have to, you know, take action. I can't just, you know, you got to learn, uh, come up with a plan and then take action. If you don't have those three pieces, uh, you know, you've got a problem. And for me, he's taken, you know, Hey, I need a process. I can't just continually take action. I need to have a process, yeah. put some systems in place, 
Uh, and so like, you know, having those different personalities and those strengths uh, in one place has been really powerful. So, 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 you know, like um, a lot of people just, I just want to dig that deeper in the, into that because a lot of people are just maybe starting up, they, they choose to go on a partnership, less risky, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there is a lot of opinions and frankly, like you, you guys are one of the best examples of, Hey, that working, I see, I see the semantic masterly. Is it called hump days? That's, that's how do you say yeah. it? Yeah, hump day hangouts on Wednesdays. Yeah, um, they, we're gonna plug that in. They talked about <laughs> they talk about SEO and, and just questions that people have, agency owners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and they got they, they get along very well and they make get make money together. So what like what do you think? So is there something else apart from like good like different skills, uh, good vibes, and something else that made that like the partnership work? Yeah, I mean, it's a high degree of trust. Um, you know, I remember telling my family at the time, uh, you know, maybe a year or two into it, and, you know, we were making money, and they were like, well, uh, you know, where did you guys meet? And, you know, I said, well, <laughs> yeah. in our mastermind, they're like, well, no, but, like, you know, didn't you guys meet up? Like, no, I've never seen these guys in my entire life. They were like, are you crazy? What if they steal the money? I yeah. was like, then there's no business, you know, and I, I think that that, you know, points back at, one, it's a different way of thinking. But two, it, it, you know, you build that trust. It's a relationship. Uh, and, you know, if one of the, us, the partners, had done something immoral or wrong, then that would have immediately destroyed that and it would have fallen apart. But, I, you know, again, it's two-way street. I think everyone needs to be very um, above board, very honest, and as transparent as you can be. I think that's, that's really important. And you can tell when people aren't that way. And, you know, we've had some partnerships where we've tried to do some deals or some GV mm -hmm. arrangements and things have not worked out. And, you know, the quick, the, the best thing I can say for that is to try to figure that out real quick. Uh, cause that can waste a lot of time, a lot of money, uh, you know, forming partnerships that don't work. Hmm. Well, that, that's some great advice. Figure out what type of person. Hmm. Yeah. So, so going, going to the final questions and we're wrapping up, have you ever automated something that took you more time than, than you actually <laughs> helped automate? Yes. Oh God. I was just thinking about this. This one is great. And we're actually reworking it because it's, it is helpful, but I think I might've spent more time setting it up. Uh, so we do webinars from time to time, uh, you know, like some JV webinars, we'll have, uh, uh people we know come in, um, especially in the tool space with SEO, there's a lot of really cool products out there. Uh, so I got tired of manually setting these up or, or having to like, okay, I'm talking to our friend who's coming on. And then I've got to talk to, you know, my assistant and tell them what to do with setting up a funnel. Maybe we're using webinar jam and there's got to be emails going out. So I set up this like 18 step zap and it's like, it <laughs> does all this stuff. And like, it took, it took me a while to get that figured out. And then I think we've used it like eight times. So like, <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it, 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 for me, it's nice, but like I looked at it and I'm like, okay, that was probably overkill. I should have just had like a spreadsheet and I could have just typed this stuff out and then done <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, yeah, I, 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 we're all guilty of this. So, don't you think that? Yeah, everyone. Um, Adam, that's the first, first one of the first questions uh, I asked you when we talked first time was, "Hey, how do you keep so young?" <laughs> <laughs> because I really, uh, I don't know if you want to say your age or not. Doesn't matter. But oh, he yeah, really right. doesn't look his age, and he. Uh, so I'm like, okay, he's. What, are you using any mask, any, anything for your skin? Are you just not stressing out all day? What are you doing? I'm 53. No, just kidding. I just turned uh, 40, <laughs> just turned 40 uh, two months ago. Uh, and just right at the same time, I also got glasses. So clearly things are like... <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. <laughs> no, uh, you know, it's funny. I've been, uh, I've, I've had my ups and downs, you know, talking about this type of a thing. Um, I was in uh, the Marine Corps uh, out of high school. Uh, after that, oh. I got out and uh, I gained a lot of weight. You know, I just, I was like, well, I don't have to exercise, so I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, after a couple of years of that, I, I think I gained 45 pounds. And, you know, mm. I was just like, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. Mm. Uh, uh, and not only because I felt unhealthy, but I'm not going to lie. It was my ego. Like I was going back to school and I'm like, I don't want to be the old guy at school who's also overweight. Like, shit, I don't want to be that dude. 
So that those two combined got me back and, you know, got me into running, which really turned my life around. Um, mm. I had done it for, um, you know, cause I had to for years in the, in the Marine Corps, but that got me into, uh, just being healthy again and then got me into trail running. And so I, if anyone is looking for something they hate, they say they hate running. I know I meet some people and they're like, Oh, I just can't stand running and to each their own. If that's not your thing, give a trail run a try. It, it's been nice. You know, you get the varied pace, you get some better scenery and, I don't know. I, I just personally love it. Mm. Okay. So trail running. Okay. Yeah. And there's but, no but, like, Oh, I w one more thing. Yeah. Sorry. I, in case her non mentioned this, I'm going to have to go back and watch his full interview. Now I, I like skipped around to listen to some stuff he said, Okay. Uh, but I made it for him uh, while we were at funnel hacking live last year. Uh, but green smoothies. So I, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love them. Uh, it's healthy. It's a good way to get a bunch of uh, greens. So we, I put a ton of spinach in it, some frozen berries, some fruit juice, uh, bananas, things like that. Um, and that's a good way to start the day. Um, so that's been a big help in doing that for a few years now. Mm, okay. Got it. Got it. Guys, all the youngsters, you guys take notice. Youngsters like me, by the way, you got to take notice. <laughs> you got to prepare. You really want to look like him. I actually <laughs> look older because of, of how tired I am sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Okay, Adam. So, so tell us about your projects. Uh, people, uh, people are like, "Hey, I love this. Uh, I want to learn more about the productivity thing. I want to learn where I can learn the SEO, semantic yeah. mastery type of stuff." So, what can you guys offer to the guys? Definitely, yeah. If you're interested in productivity, this stuff, head to productivity academy. That's the actual uh, URL. Uh, just head over there. Anything to do with productivity, time management, uh, team building all that sort of good stuff. I also talk about the tools. Um, if you're looking for like to-do list help, anything like that, uh, that's the place to go. Uh, if you're looking for SEO and digital marketing help, uh, me and my partners can definitely help you head to semanticmastery.com. Um, that's the start. If you want to ask us questions, uh, head to semanticmastery.com slash HD questions. And that's hump day questions. And it's a free open forum for anything related to digital marketing. We do get mostly SEO questions. Mm -hmm. um, but we all have our own consulting or agencies. Um, so if it's anything related to that realm, we can at least point you in the right direction, if not give you an answer. Uh, mm -hmm. And then last but not least, uh, if you're interested in email marketing uh, and sales funnels, I'm a ClickFunnels certified partner. And I've also been building funnels and email marketing uh, for not only our businesses, but as well for clients, especially in the e-commerce space. Uh, and you can find out more about that at oasisoptimization.com. Awesome. Awesome. So, hey, Adam, uh, you've given some amazing tips here. I, I think that people should just pause, write, like write down stuff and just go with it and, and maybe come back a week later or something like that and keep on taking it. Definitely visit Productivity Academy. They also have the, the, the Twix, your agency, mm -hmm. uh, new, new, new offer, which is like, hey, if you, you guys have any – you guys have this SEO agency, digital marketing. I definitely recommend you guys go ahead and, and check the, the offer that they have right now, um, which is like a hundred, if I'm not mistaken, maybe it goes up. I don't know, but it's a hundred dollars, right? And yeah, it's 97 bucks for, uh, for yeah, to X your agency.com. Yeah. That actually, this is really cool. And I appreciate you bringing this up. Um, yeah, it's from us at Semantic Mastery and, and Hernan and my par other partner, Bradley, have done the bulk of the training. Um, and these guys both have agencies. And so this is the real deal. So it's called two X your agency for a reason. There's uh, 12 weeks of, go of training that's going into that. Uh, and it, we're on week nine, but it's a one-time payment. Um, it's, you know, we got three more weeks coming, but as soon as it's ready, yeah, you get instant access to all of it for 97 bucks. Huge value, huge value. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Adam, thank you so much uh, for, for being here and I hope to talk to you soon. Hey, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, man. Guys, this has been uh, Young, Clever, and Wealthy. I expect you guys on the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.